three, two, one. <laughs> What's up, YouTube fans? Welcome to a special edition of Unstuck, where we're going to rock out to 90s rock bands. That's right, another top five. I'm your host, as always, Paul S. Stuffy Esquire, and I'm joined by Jay Goobles, RCW, and together we are Wild Stallions. Okay, I got really prepared for this video. Uh, Jay Goobles inspired me to grow uh, or to shave into a goat tee since he was doing it for the channel. Uh, I got a flannel tied around my waist. I got Doc Martin's boots on. Here, I better flip the camera on. I got Doc Martin's boots. I got flannel tied around the waist. I got a period correct. Bridges over Babylon Rolling Stone shirt with leather. And uh, in case you didn't catch it, my ticket to Woodstock 99. So uh, also... For my wristwatch check, a watch purchased in the 90s, my Citizen wristwatch. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we're going to kick off our 90s rock bands. So let's go around to our intros. Take it away, guys, while I put up my first background. All right. Uh, well, one thing, I don't have anything from the 90s anymore. And one thing I don't miss from the 90s is all the clothes that did not fit well. Everything was super baggy. I don't know if it's my age kicking in. I'm just not into the, uh, the baggy stuff. It was a good era. Oh, there we go. Woodstock 99 with uh, yeah. Mr. Stuffy in the back. Yeah, my background is a picture of all of us at Woodstock 99. Damn. I throw it up there for some uh, nostalgia. That's a handsome sucker right there. Rome, New York. And uh, oh, I feel like the older we get, the puffier our faces get. No puffy faces in that when we were 19. Sure. No way. Some of, uh, some of you were probably still 18, uh, Jay Goobles. Hey, yeah, the oh, kid yeah. of the group. Oh, the yeah, at that time, for Woodstock night, yeah, I was probably still 18 years old at that time. Well, anyway, YouTube, I am rocking my 90s. This I bought, bought this. This was my first big watch purchase in 1999. It's a Seiko chronograph. <laughs> Unbelievable. I still have it. It don't work, but it's still cool. I feel like I had to wear it for this video. Got my flannel on. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, heads up on the goatee shave so we can both do the goatee. I love that you got the flannel on, too. So let's go right into the uh, my number five. So I'm stuck down there. That is Vinny Dombrowski. I actually took that picture. So we're talking about Sponge. I uh, took that picture when I saw him live. So I'm going with Sponge. Uh, for the album, I'm going 1994 Rotting Pinatas. I had this album, and uh, I just I love Sponge. They got a local St. Clair Shores, Michigan connection where Vinny lives. And for the song, I'm going Plowed, man. Uh, and I'd also like to thank Howard Stern. He's a big fan of our boys, Sponge, and he uh, promotes them all the time. He's had them on. So, yeah, my number five, Sponge, totally 90s. Yeah, I mean, um, it doesn't get more '90s than than Sponge, and I don't, I don't know. Did they ever make any albums outside of the '90s? I don't think they did. I don't, I don't think, think so. they have any albums outside of the '90s. I think they did, guys. Uh, it's little known fact. I think they had seven studio albums, so they did carry on beyond the '90s. It's just uh, they kind of lost mainstream popularity after their first couple. Well, and for the people who uh, aren't from St. Clair Shores, you can still catch uh, Dembrowski at uh, Savvy's. A little shout-out to Savvy's and uh, 
the Dombrowski. You can go see him there. And uh, what, John, you remember or uh, Jay Google? Do you remember the name of their that band that plays there now? What's what's his band's name? The Orbisons. The Orbisons. That's it. Great pick for the '90s, especially local band. I like it, Paul. Okay, why don't you take it away with your number five position? All right, number five. Uh, there's a lot of bands that left out of here, but you know what? I'm going to go with The Offspring. It's a, it's a band I listened to a ton when that first album came out. It, I mean, who can't, you know, who can't uh, identify with the song Self Esteem? Uh, it's just great band. Reminds me of being... Uh, in my teens, man. That would be my number five pick, guys. All right. Hey, Jay Goobles, uh, I mean, straight punk, uh, California punk rock right there. Mainstream Hell, California punk rock. Punk, and, you know, rock, punk rock, pop, all mixed together. Kind yeah, of, you know? a little bit. A little bit. Um, you know, yeah, the 90s, you know, we've grown up, obviously. This is, you know, we're going 20 years ago from the end of the 90s. So obviously, maybe some of our music has changed. So I tried to pick some bands that were really in influential to me back then that I listened to that I still listen to now. And Jay Goobles was uh, kind of saying the same thing. So I picked Rage Against the Machine. The aggression, just it spoke of the 90s, just pure aggression. Um, the guitar, just a different funky rap. Still some soul rock and roll in there. Every album... Just, you know, in your face, rock and roll. Tom Morello, you know, went to Harvard. Um, one of my favorite quotes from Tom Morello is, is from Rolling Stone when um, he went back to Harvard and uh, told some, ran into some people that he graduated with. They didn't know he was in Rage Against the Machine, didn't know the band. And uh, they asked him what he was doing. He goes, I'm in a band. And they go, oh, we'd love to come see you play one day. And he said, oh, yeah. I'll get you some tickets. We'll put you right out in front with everybody. You know, kind of insinuating they probably didn't know what kind of band he was in. Yep, rage makes me want to break shit, man. Yeah, so that brings us right back to 1999. Woodstock, we see Limp Biscuit, Rage Against the Machine, and then Metallica all in a row. And then guess what happens the next freaking morning? A riot breaks out and the pretty yeah. burn the place out. Would you, would you expect anything less from us? <laughs> From our generation. Yeah. Woodstock 99, one of the freaking uh, worst concerts uh, in the history of like, uh, you know, there was the Nightmare at Altamont, was like the 70s bad <laughs> concert experience. And then we've got, you know, Woodstock 99, where there's fires and riots and tipping over semi trucks. So that brings me into another 90s band. We ducked down, we got Counting Crows. Uh, again, I tried to think like what you guys wouldn't have up there. And I tried to focus more on the songs that were influential and I listened to over and over. So from the album, 93, August and, uh, August and Everything, uh, I've got two songs that I listen to all the time still to this day, Rain King and Mr. Jones. Mr. Mr. Jones, is Jones and me. Yeah, so I mean, lyrics to that song, I just think of myself going out, you know, with my alter ego and it's like, I'm staring at a yellow-haired girl while Mr. Jones is staring at a black-haired flamenco dancer, you know. It's like the whole altered ego fight, you know. It's kind of cool. And then Rain King, I can listen to over and over again. Now, they probably hit it big with their uh, Long December. Courtney Cox was in the video. I think the lead singer was dating her at the time. And a funny other Courtney Cox reference is Bruce Springsteen's Dancing in the Dark video. It looks like she's just in the crowd, but he pulls Courtney Cox up on stage. I'm sure it was planned, but uh, just a fun little trivia fact uh, to go along with uh, the Counting Crows in the number four position. Well, I always thought the lead singer looked like uh, Robert Downey Jr. with, uh, like, Dreadlocks. <laughs> if, he, if he really let himself go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, what's your number four there, uh, RCW? Well, I'm going with Alice in Chains. Um, this was a tough one to put them down this low, too, for me. Um, saw them open up for Kiss at Tiger Stadium in 1996. Lane Stanley, it was one of his last shows that he ever played. I think it was like his third from last. 
in America. They might have did a quick tour or something in Europe, but or it could have just been in Zen. I can't specifically remember. Anyways, they come out. The, the Red Wings are just about to beat the Colorado Av- Avalanche for the first Stanley Cup in like 30 years. Lane Stanley comes out, says, Steve Eiserman sucks. The crowd's booing. It was just pure rock and roll to me. Head banging rock and roll. And they really were one of those bands that transitioned from maybe the late 80s where that, that hair metal was still going. And they transitioned hair metal and alternative. Underrated for what they did for uh, music. And they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't even think they've gotten a nomination. Nah, it's unfortunate. They are an awesome band. And Jerry Cantrell's riffs, uh, Lane Stanley's voice. Yeah, just, you know, a great Seattle sound. All right, with uh, my number four, I am, uh, as maybe you guys can see, it's got to be one of the most popular rock albums of the 90s. Uh, but uh, I'm going with Weezer. And obviously, the Blue Album was uh, was definitely unbelievable when it came out. It, it made it cool to be a nerd and still rock. I mean, so many heavy riffs, awesome melodies. It just... They're one of this. They they actually could have been higher on my list, but uh, I think they're going to slot in nice at number four. And uh, I don't know how you can beat that in the nineties. Yeah, I mean, hey, if you want to destroy my sweater, put them in a different position. <laughs> you know. So again, this who, list who was is really Jonas? hard. We probably we probably could have done top ten easy, and I think we purposely left off some bands that we just like knew we would all pick. So we uh we kind of went from there. So in my number three, we got Pearl Jam. Okay, so Pearl Jam, I actually love the song Yellow Leadbetter. And an interesting fact, Yellow Leadbetter didn't even make the uh, the album. It was only the B-side single to Jeremy. Of course, everyone knows Jeremy. 1991, album 10, features Jeremy. It's their hit. It was the single. And, uh, of course, they got the uh, Master's Teeth and Beat the Leap. Bit the least recess, latest breath. How can I forget? I mean, every 90s song you can just go into that voice and do most 90s songs. A-I-O-U. There's that scene, scene in Ted the movie where the teddy bears, you know, making fun of 90s music where you could just do that kind of like rah, 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 voice and uh, sing any 90s song. So, yeah, there's actually an awesome live version if you go on to any streaming service hopefully they have it yellow lead better live in san francisco they go from yellow lead better into a, a live guitar riff of the star spangled banner so pretty badass oh. I definitely... Boy, paul stuffy here let me ask you something what the hell are the damn lyrics to yellow lead better that's what i, I want to nobody know. knows no one <laughs> it doesn't matter no one knows. it's nobody rock and knows. roll it's music it doesn't matter the lyrics <laughs> The lyrics don't ever really matter as long as they kind of flow together. And when you ask these artists, when you read all these interviews with these artists and everything, I feel like they don't even know. It's just take it, take it how, how you take it, you know? Yeah. In fact, this reminds me of another that I was tough for me to cut. Blues Traveler, the song Hook is literally about if you have a good hook, it'll bring you back. And the rest of the lyrics, he even admits in interviews, don't make any freaking sense. He's just rambling on, and then he's like, the hook will bring you back. So, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a play on that theme that it doesn't matter what you say if your freaking music rocks and you're just, you know, bringing you back with that hook. All right. Um, well, I got Weezer. <laughs> hey, okay. You know. We're splitting hairs here, three, two, four, one, five, whatever. Um, but just right there, the heavy power chords, you know, the Flying V, the Marshall Stacks, singing about Kiss on, on, on their Blue Album. I mean, I I love it. <laughs> it's just rock and roll. It's, yeah. it, it's, it was stripped down rock and roll until they started getting a little more poppy now. Oh, it's still great, man. I love that band. 
And we see your uh, selection, Jay Goobles. Uh, why don't you take it away with your next one? All right, with well, number three, and I'm sure some people think this could be higher. It should be number one, but uh, number three, I'm obviously, as you guys can see, Nirvana. Uh, I don't think a list of 90s rock bands could uh, be left out with Nirvana. I mean, they pretty much changed the game, made everything great. I mean, never mind. Like I said, never mind changed everything. So, I mean, I couldn't leave them off the band. I remember as a kid just – Lit, having that having that cassette type tape and just listen to it nonstop, over and over and over. So many songs yeah. to choose from. I can't even pick a favorite. Yeah, I agree. That's. I mean, we're literally wearing flannels to represent the '90s because of Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. So, well, uh, and I, you know, also with the you know the T-shirt with the long sleeve uh, flan flannel under it, or the T-shirt with with the long sleeve, uh, long sleeve t-shirt under it, you know, with a, a short sleeve on top. Oh yeah. Kurt Cobain made that famous, man. Yeah. Yeah. Grunge. Much. Literally define grunge. And then what else is amazing is that Dave Grohl, the drummer from Nirvana was able to survive, you know, Nirvana ending and not only become a lead singer to transition from a drummer to a lead singer, but have another band that had commercial success with the Foo Fighters. That's, yeah, the Foo Fighters, Fighters could have been out bigger. Way. And the Foo Fighters are bigger than Nirvana. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Nirvana couldn't continue anymore. I think if they could have continued, it would have been a different story. But yeah, Foo Fighters, you know, surpassed Nirvana because of the length of time. But it's just very strange that a drummer can transition to become a lead singer. That's crazy. So I lost yeah, track. I don't think anybody realized how talented Dave Grohl was. Obviously, yeah, I didn't hear about him when Nirvana was mentioned. Uh, are we to me for my number two? Yes, we are. Okay, so here we go. Dave Matthews Band. Again, uh, to me, he's quintessential 90s. I've seen him a couple times. My best experience was a road trip with uh, B. Roy, Boston Roy. We went down for uh, New Orleans Jazz Fest and also got to see Dave Matthews. Uh, you also have not made love till you have made love. And I'm not talking about sex. I'm not talking about scrumping. I'm talking about you have not made love till you put on Dave Matthews' 1996 album Crush and you just go to town. <laughs> so, uh, Scrumping is a total my, 90s word. Yeah, that's a total <laughs> 90s word we used in the 90s. That's why I had to bring it out. We brought out the goatees. We're bringing out the uh, retro terms. And, scrumping, uh, my baby, favorite, scrumping. My favorite song from Crush is Two Step. And then, of course, my favorite album, but it didn't happen in the 90s, is his live in Central Park. But that happened in, like, early 2000s. Oh. I had to go with it. Crash. I'm with you, Stuffy. Killer Cortez with Warren Haynes. Oh, God. That's another great song. But live in Central Park. Yeah. And if you get a chance, he did a uh, – sorry to keep bringing it back to Stern, but he does such great interviews. He does – he has Dave Matthews perform a live acoustic version of Pro Call Harum's Whiter Shade of Pale, and it is so great. I actually pulled out my iPhone in the car and recorded the radio because I loved his version so much. And you can actually hear my car blinker going off in the background of the recording, but that's how much I love uh, his version of Whiter Shade of Pale. Yeah, underrated talent. I don't know, like I kind of relate him to uh, like an Elton John kind of even though he doesn't play piano, but like an Elton John of guitar. His music reminds me of, of, of a throwback of a new version of that when he came out in the 90s. He was definitely quintessential 90s, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, let's keep it rolling. Who's got another number two? All right, I'll go. I don't know if you can see back there. We got a uh, black row. Yeah, Man, I knew one of you guys I... would do it. How did I not I think knew it. Black Crows? Totally forgot. I, that is unbelievable. Like, I can't believe I forgot that. I mean, and Shake Your Moneymaker came out in 1990. I was just uh, fact-checking everything. Every, they, they formed in 84, but their first full, their first uh, major album was in 90. 
So, I mean, everything, it's like, how could you not? And uh, Stuffy, we saw him at the State Theater yeah, back in 96, that was, uh, that, was another, that was another questionable night where some uh, bad decisions might have been made, but it was a good time. We've actually seen the Crows a lot. I hope we still get to see him. We actually have tickets for uh, what I'll call Pine Knob because I'm not calling the DTE Music Which Festival. is like State Theater, yeah. Yeah, it's just like we still call it the State Theater, even though it's like the Fillmore now. Uh, yeah, we've got tickets, so hopefully, uh, you know, this COVID goes away so we can go. Yep. I can't and, you know, wait. another thing, they're another good transition band, too. Like, they weren't they, – they had their own sound. They were just rock and roll. Yeah, they're pure rock and roll. No grunge in them. Just pure rock and roll. I'm making my own video on the phone. KJ Goobles. All right, fellas. Uh, my number two, I believe Ryan had it as number four, but – Coming in at number two for me is uh, Allison Chains. Heavy, hard, make you want to cry sometimes listening to them. But, dark. I mean, dude, just dark, heavy, and awesome. Uh, I can't think of a band. I might even listen to this band as much as I listen to my number one nowadays. But uh, I love Allison Chains. Yeah. I can't I disagree mean, with you. Our- yeah, this is our first duplicate okay. also, so we're doing good so far. And, and my number one is our next duplicate. I've got Nirvana in number one just because, again, they were so 90s. But I'm going to go a different direction. I know, like you said, you could easily put up Smells Like Teen Spirit from the Nevermind album and Case Closed. But I'm going to go a little uh, bit off key. I'm going to go with MTV's Unplugged. Unplugged. November 18th, 1993, live performance. Kurt Cobain does a live cover of David Bowie's The Man Who Sold the World. And I think that version not only pays awesome respect to David Bowie, it's right up there with the original version. And I love when a cover version can be just as enjoyable or better in different ways. So that's why I went with that. And unfortunately, uh, five months after this performance, Kurt was murdered. And yeah, you heard me right. Murdered. Courtney did it. Watched watched the BBC documentary. I saw it in the theater in the 90s. The BBC documentary. Kurt and Courtney. Not not that new one, Bleach. Watched the original BBC documentary. Kurt and Courtney. Courtney Courtney definitely did it. But this, you know, uh, you're the king of conspiracies. You know, so I think we should do a top five conspiracies. And we definitely could do top five conspiracies as another uh, episode, but that's my number one. Check it out if you haven't heard his cover of David Bowie and listen to that whole album, Unplugged. This is pre before MTV ruined television by going to the reality when they actually played music and got involved with live concerts. Their Unplugged series was awesome. You know, it's oh, so yeah. funny you're talking about that, like listen to the song, but it was like 26 years ago. It just, it was so mainstream for us. That, that song that, you know, would be played on the radio, too. That album was huge when it came out, when they all did it, when Alice in Chains did it, even when Kiss did it. I mean, it, the, the Unplugged, the Unplugged could have been like a, a – a, we could do a top five Unplugged. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, the my, of the 90s. <laughs> oh, yeah. My, uh, my number one band had a great Unplugged as well. Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's take it away with some of your number ones here. All right, checking at number one for me. Obviously, if you guys can see it, Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, to me, they were kind of like their own thing. They weren't quite grunge. They weren't quite rock and roll. They were kind of psychedelic. They were, they're all over the map, and uh, they're just my favorite. I mean, I everything about them. That the their second album, their sophomore day, uh, album. Uh, Purple was just an album I listened to nonstop. I mean, I think I wore out my tape. Uh, Interstate Love Song, I mean, to me, is like one of the – I mean, when I think of the 90s, Interstate Love Song, that's that, that's like one of the songs that are near the top for me. Uh, it, Scott Weiland, one of my favorite lead singers in any any era. So, yeah, by far they're my number one. And we could do the voice, her, 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 you know, with Stone Temple Pilots, too. A little bit. I mean, when he got into his later albums, he didn't quite have the same uh, Eddie Better 
sounding voice to them, but yeah. But yeah, another great band with the, their uh, unplugged set was awesome as well. Yeah, and then with Velvet and another, Revolver, uh, their super group. Much like we lost, much much like we lost Kurt, we lost Scott Weiland too. Another tragic uh, performer died too young. Oh yeah, like so many. Mm -hmm. of them. We had him a lot longer with you know Velvet Revolver super group with Guns and Roses, you know. Another, another great rock band. It's just frustrating that there's no rock anymore. It's all kind of underground, even if you do want to try and find rock. But, the, hey, we got Spotify now. Well, uh, I, see, find anything. I see you are kind of throwing things off with your number one pick, RCW. Yeah, I did. I had to, re I had to redo some thinking here. And at, looking at the Tragically Hip, I, I – but listening to them all through the 90s and now seeing them probably 10 times. Gord, God rest his uh, soul, Godspeed, died a few years ago. Um, you know, from a little sleepy town in Kingston, Ontario, it's the Tragically Hip, one of the most underrated rock and roll bands of all time. Now, you go to Canada, ask anybody in Canada, they know who the Tragically Hip is. Michigan, maybe a little Metro Detroit, you know, from 90, 93.9, the river used to play them. 89X used to play them a little bit. But, I mean, outside of Michigan, I don't think anybody knows who the Tragically Hip is, and they're one of the greatest rock and roll bands. And one of the greatest live albums, recorded at Cobo by the Tragically Hip. Just very underrated. With Blow High, I, know, know. I mean, every album is good. Yeah, I can listen to Bob. Cajun and like a tear forms in my eyes, man. It's just a beautiful song. And again, not to keep bringing up Woodstock 99, but we saw Tragically Hip, Woodstock 99, and the Canadians yeah. are so proud. The crowd out of nowhere, full size Canadian flags come out over the crowd, like hundreds of them. I'm like, where did they have these flags at, man? The, the Hips fans were so loyal. They're busting yeah, out they're, Canadian flags. The, yeah, the Canadians are dedicated. Another, Another funny memory I'd always have is when we'd go to Windsor, because the drinking age was 19, we'd go to Windsor and hit bars, and you'd always ask the Canadian chicks and start up conversations about the Tragically Hip. You're like, you'd be like, ah, oh, let's talk Tragically Hip. And they always would, man. They all knew it. But you'd go to a, you know, a, a bar a little further out in the suburbs of Michigan, they don't know who the hell Tragically Hip is. No, nobody, I would say, you know, I, nobody around here really knew the tragically hip and we were lucky to get exposed to it and you know figure out that hey this is good music it's it's not super popular but it's good music which you know oh, unfortunately great. back then you only really had the radio as opposed to now you got youtube spotify you know pandora itunes i mean you got all that stuff to, to find all all this new music now back then you had the radio and you know the metro times and magazines in word of mouth, yeah, or, and or hanging exactly. out at the record mouth. store. Hey, yeah, guys. Word of mouth for me, too. Did you guys notice that we left Soundgarden off our list, all three of our lists? It was a tough one. That is all yeah, three I mean, Or Green Day. It was Day. a tough one. No I, Green Day, yeah, no Green Soundgarden. Day. I actually left Green Day off because I assumed RCW would have it because he used to do a freaking air guitar to our uh, Green Day, you know, get up on the table, do an air guitar to it. I purposely left off Guns N' Roses because we all agreed they're probably one of the greatest. Yeah, but we couldn't yeah, decide we if put, they were. I mean, if we're going all time, all time rock and roll bands, Guns N' Roses is going to be up there. And we agreed, like, yeah, we just can't put Guns N' Roses on here. Yeah. Plus, they started before the 90s. We were trying to pick bands that, like, really peaked in the 90s and that, like, they defined the 90s. Uh, we could have went, I mean, easily a top 10 from each of us. You know, we could have had 30 bands up here and still not covered. It really was the last great decade. And what also is funny is growing up, we also listened to a lot of 70s. Like, my Cadillac, my 77 Cadillac still had an 8-track player, and it didn't have good radio reception in high school. So I was listening to the 8-tracks from, like, the Commodores. I had CCR's greatest hits on freaking 8-track, you know, so I couldn't listen to a lot of newer music unless I was, like, in the house, in my bedroom. Then I was checking out other bands and stuff, and MTV when it still played music, and then word of mouth, like you said, between all of us, like, hey, check out this CD. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I think, I don't know, I think our school and our grade, 
was very diverse when it came to music. I mean, we, I mean, everybody listened to Led Zeppelin. Everybody listened to Jimi Hendrix. The Beatles were huge, you know, all mixed in with this nineties music. Ah, uh, what a great yeah. time. Now there's nothing. Yeah, we could... No, I feel like younger generation don't listen to any older music. It's just like, you know, it's boring or whatever. And it's, you know, and this I, could be a whole nother topic for a whole yeah. other video. We could do a yeah. whole, we could I think do like we gotta, a whole hour podcast on this. Yeah, I think we got to sign off here just because our videos have been going so long. So I'm going to sign out, YouTube. Have a good night. Peace, YouTube. See y'all.